A good drop is what separates the pros from the average producers, and it might be easier to accomplish than you think. I'll show you this and more. Welcome back, I'm Music by Lucas, and for the past three years, I've been traveling full-time, producing, DJing, speaking, and making tutorials and content to help music producers grow. And as always, one of the first 100 comments will win a free sound bank from my website, teammbl.com. So let's show you the best methods to make amazing drops from production sessions I've had with Mo Falk and Robbie Mendez. Yeah, so there is quite a bit of pitch automations going on. I like to have, like, okay, very basically three layers for every sound so that you have a stereo a mono and something in between sound so that you can always be sure that all your sounds are filling out the stereo width and depth the way they should that's the first thing that has to work in the drop um, next thing is yeah i would say pitch automations just so that it isn't so static um, especially when the notes just come in right if the bass goes ba. It's different from if it goes, wow. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's just a bit cooler. Yeah, it's, it's, that's something special about your sound, I think, too, because when a lot of people hear your tracks, I think their reaction, kind of like when they hear like a Retrovision track as well, it's, it's kind of like, how did they do that? You know, it's kind of like this yep. extra, and that's what shows, I think, the labels uh, that you are here, you know, for to be a serious producer. For me, it's always like, do I max out my FL Studio channels? Like if I have 128 tracks, 125 or what it is, I kind of know I have enough sounds. If I'm finished and I have 50 tracks used, I'll usually go back in and add more variations, little switch ups and more layers, stuff like this. But it is also part of like my genre is electro house, right? And especially in electro house, it is very important to have little nuggets of like ear candy everywhere and cool switch ups and stuff like this. What else are you doing to fill up the drop? Uh, three layers for your sounds, yes, and then effects. Because you just said it, effects, I think it's very important to have reverb, but use it in a clever way, right? So if you just put a reverb on it and it's constantly playing, I don't think it works. So what I do is I have a reverb on, let's say, these chords, and let's listen to that. And you can tell the reverb is usually muted and sometimes it comes in. Then you can use it as an effect because to the listener's brain, it's like when the reverb comes in, it's like, oh, reverb. If the reverb is constantly there, it's just like, yeah, that's the sound, right? So I use it more as an effect and not as room and just have reverb there. More like as a suction thing where it's like, bam, and it like leads you next like into the next. Yeah. Where are you getting your samples from usually? Is it your own samples or are you just mixing in different ones from Splice or? Samples is, is a big thing, right? Big topic. I think you have to find the right balance between using your own sounds, but then also using like working really good, well-produced sounds as well. So most of my kicks and drums like that are usually from Splice, just like Virtual Riot drums or even Kashmir drums still. And yeah. all of the little effects, like percussions, hats, stuff like this, like toms, those things that I, I try to make myself because those are the ones that will stand out. And for the listener, it's much cooler if they have like a tom from the right, left, you know, something. And it's not a tom that they hear in every other track. It's like, oh, that was cool compared to you know, oh, it's the Kashmir 23 tom that everybody uses. Yeah. What would you say is like the biggest difference uh, in your production between your breaks and your drops? Drops and breaks, I try to keep them mostly like as close to each other as I can. I think the biggest difference is just having more bass, having more rhythmic elements. Like in, in the break, the most rhythmic thing I will have is probably a shaker or a hat or a clap or something like this, you know? Vocal right. isn't that rhythmic, chords aren't that rhythmic. Um, but in the drop, you know, I'll have bass stabs, chords, uh, little percussions, you know, small ghost notes, snares, just a lot more. It's almost like a disco vibe even, like sometimes with your, with your percussion, it's really cool. So basically yeah. what you're doing is you're trying to slowly build that energy up until the drop and then you just kind of let loose. Exactly. So for me, I, for the longest time, I was struggling in my own productions with getting the energy across that I wanted to have in my tracks. So I would have like a really cool break, really cool build up, and then my drop was like, nah, okay, right? It wouldn't bring the energy across. And I kind of made it my mission now to never do that again. So I always want people to, like when they have a crazy build up, I want them to be like satisfied with the drop. I think that's what I'm trying to do as well, is like 
don't overpromise. And can you talk to us a little bit about the sound design or the sounds that you're using? Is it mainly serum or? So in terms of sound design, I think the most important thing with my drops is usually the basses and switching it up between more than one bass, having like a sustained bass, having a very like plucky bass. And I think the synergy you can get from mixing those two together is really, really cool. And that's what I do. So here in this case, for example, I have one bass, which is playing along with the chords, a different bass that is very similar, but more heavy that I use as an effect. And then I have another bass, which is like very stabby just to like emphasize the rhythm, right? So I'll show you all of them. I, this one is the one that's playing underneath the chords. It's actually called Steph da Campo. It's just, it's just a saw wave and it's low passed, right? So that here, uh, I don't get any high frequencies. And I think even here, yeah, I'm doing like a little bit of EQ and yeah, right? And this is really cool because if you play this together with the chords, I love those reverbs, like that is the key. Yeah, it's the so reverbs nice. really do a good job. All right, so then, right, so I have chords, I have bass, and then I have this really crazy effect bass that I use. Yeah. Oh yeah. That one does sound similar to the ones in the Mo Falk pack you did for us. Like exactly. Like the, the serum presets. It, it might even big, be the same, sound. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it is the same. It's just Mo <laughs> doesn't have the team in Bialto because it is before I, I put it out. So. On this one, I'm using like a lot of comp filtering, um, especially on the second part. Like you can tell the difference. This one is just normal grit. And on this one, you get like a lot of high like movement. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing this with just a normal comp filter. So let me go on here and I'm just using Serum FX. I'm not, I thought I was using Serum FX, come on. I'm using this one. Yeah, it's the lower one. So here you can see it's a comp minus. And as the note is playing, I'm switching up the cutoff. Yeah. Just a lit little bit. And it's like creating phasing in the high frequencies. And I think it sounds really, really cool. And it's just like, I th for me, this was the main sound of the drop. Like I wanted people to remember that sound. So I built the entire drop around that. And when I had this, I remember I was like, okay, this is cool, but it's kind of lacking something. It, like. The, ba the bases don't fill up well. So I added the third bass, which are these stabs. Oh yeah. And without these, the entire drop actually doesn't work. So. Like. Ah, I really, yeah, because you really missed the groove. Exactly. So with these, right, they just enhance whatever was there already. And they don't try to take the main, like, they don't want to be in the forefront, right? C compared to this main bass, which I had before, that really wants to be the main thing. But with the bass, this, with the, the short stabby one, it's like there's sometimes other stuff playing above it and it's not really that crazy, but it really does a good job of filling out those empty spaces and give more like energy to then the main bass and the chords and stuff like that. And I think that's what a lot of producers need to do more of is like, if you notice your track, has a vibe to it in particular, like with this track, it's very funky, very groovy. Then you gotta like almost like overdose on it. You gotta think to yourself like, how can I make this more groovy? How can I make it more funky? Or if it's dark, how can I make it more dark? How yeah. can I make it? And you really wanna go to a point to where it's too much and then scale back. Cause you wanna get to that yeah. limit of like, how can I make this the most of that? That is exactly, I, I couldn't agree more. Anyways, uh, in the end, it's just built into the drop. And uh, what I like for uh, a remix, uh, what I always try to uh, um, create is use the vocal in the drop. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, the, usually the artist of, now in this case, it's an unofficial, but if you make an official remix, the, the artist likes to bring back the vocal in the drop, you know, like it gives an extra touch to right. it. These the stuff that you can see here, all vocal chops. <laughs> So yeah, that's the drop. So when I mute the chops, I will show the difference. Yeah, and you know, most people would make a demo like this, like without the chops. Yeah. And I think it's just that extra organic element that really makes it stand exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, I use it as, as in a, some sort of instrument, really. Uh, even though it's just the voice, but uh, a voice is really relatable to a human and, and human ear, so it is automatically uh, very organic. So that's uh, a good explanation there. And um, I used that. Um... 
that, 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 that. That's the, the part that makes me excited to make this remix in all the way in the beginning when wow. I heard the Jason Derulo and I was like, oh really, I wanna use that into the drop. It's really nice too because you have that layered on top of the part with the lead where it's like So it kind of like, they play off each other in this really cool way. Yeah, it's, it's like, uh, again, the A and B part. In this case, it's like um, three times A and then switch to the B part, so. Um, like it's and then that last spot, it really switched up, you know, that's like the B part of the drop. Yeah. Um, just to give it a different uh, energy, as well as the bass line, if, I don't know if you noticed, but it uh, goes up as well. And that really gives an extra uh, emotion to it. Yeah, and again, a lot of people would just loop that first two bars of the bass. You know what I mean? Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun. And the thing is, it just it's important that every four bars to every eight bars, you have these switch ups so that you know it doesn't yeah. sound so repetitive. Once I have the rhythm and the bass ready, you can easily fill it in with little uh, percussions, uh, the vocal chops, and all that stuff because the the groove is set, yeah. which is super important. Sometimes when I listen to demos. I really feel like you have so many cool elements, but there's no groove. Just focus on the, the main elements and from there on add these extra touch to it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of artists kind of maybe focus on creating like a big lead or a big, you know, something yeah. like that, but they forget about the foundational, the groove part of the track, which really is what kind of yes. makes the whole track sound amazing at the end. So if I'm gonna play this right now without the lead, it has such a groove. You know, you can almost use it as some sort of first drop, you yeah, know, almost yeah, yeah, already, yeah. because it's it's already really thick. So it's just filling in the, the extra details, and it's not really about one lead or one bass, or no, it's the, the everything together. And That's it for drops, but if you want to watch the full videos with Robbie Mendez and Mo Falk, I'll leave the links below. Also, give this video a thumbs up, and make sure to hit the bell button to be notified about future videos. And if you like my tips here, but you just want more one-on-one -on -one attention, you can become an official member of my team at teammbl.com slash join. We work together on video chat and have masterclasses and demo drops with some of the world's biggest record labels and DJs. And now, some more helpful producer tutorials.